Right, well, there's uh, something missing here. Yes, and you can see it here, the, uh, the mark on the uh, stone. And that's uh, where our van is normally parked. Yeah, I mean, that uh, Renault Master van, we bought it uh, new in 2002. So we had it quite a few years. Uh, it's only down about 70 or 80,000 miles. Um, but about, I would say, probably 10 years ago, <laughs> the synchromesh went in the second gear. Um, and we were given all sorts of expensive prices for having a gearbox repaired or a new one or whatever. So we just didn't bother. Um, we didn't drive it much in the town. It was driven mainly just uh, going to the forest and going on long distance routes where you could you know drive for hours in almost one gear uh, so uh, we just lived with it um, but suddenly uh, a few days ago the uh, we couldn't get it into second at all whereas before we could uh, we could get into second going up the gears but not going down um, but we couldn't get it into fourth either and it was becoming difficult to get it into any gear that could have been a linkage problem, but uh, we decided to uh, have a new gearbox fitted. So we've um, taken it into Angling Vehicle Services, and we're going to have a reconditioned gearbox fitted to it. So hopefully that'll be uh, and a new clutch, obviously it'll fit a new clutch at the same time. Not that, that was f failing, but at least we'll have a new clutch and new gearbox, so hopefully we'll have that back. And uh, we'll have our van back there in this sort of temporary mess that we're living in while the uh, build is going on. Just looking at that uh, cover, you can see it's, uh, it is waterproof, eh? It's kept the car dry. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's dry, isn't it? It's not a bad cover, really. And the uh, that muff, that uh, cover on the radiator, there um, has done quite a good job for the uh, Citroen. It's made it uh, a bit of an improvement, especially when you're you know you're driving a bit higher speed because it's keeping the uh, temperature uh, warmer in the uh, this cold weather we've been having. Not that today is uh, that cold, uh, but it has been cold for the last few days. Right. Well, it's a beautiful day. And what's amazing here is that uh, it's it's the end of February, <laughs> end of February, and it's like summer. I haven't even got a coat on. So, what I was thinking was that um, this is a a classic shape, <laughs> a coupe. Um, now, I suppose well uh, the kind of big back long nose that was actually even a fashion um, back in the 30s but let's say that we're talking about the 50s when Aston Martin I don't know maybe Jensen whatever some uh, car companies started to produce and the Italians this sort of feeling for a car um, and through the 60s lots of cars came out but of course the E-Type Jag you know that was that shape, and then, and in a way, you had the uh, the Mustang, um, and and cars of that ilk. Um, now, I sort of joined the fray, as it were. When I had enough money to buy some cars back in the early 70s, and I bought a, the first one on that. In this line of styling, was uh, the Celica. I had f four uh, Celicas actually in a period of 10 years. I had a um, the first model. Um, I had the ST and the GT, which the GT had a twin cam uh, engine uh, at the time, um, but they were as a first generation Celica. Then I had the uh, second generation, I had two of those, they were again an ST and a GT, uh, and they were the ones that looked like a mini Mustang, they were a fantastic car. But um, uh, after that, uh, I didn't have too many coupes until recently. Right, and here's my latest. 
uh, car that I own in that style, which is the Crossfire. You know, beautiful shape. This is a absolutely beautiful car. Everyone who watches my videos knows that I just love this design. Um, but, you know, it's that classic shape, isn't it? The same shape that Aston Martin did. The same shape that, uh, that's my dog barking, that the E-Type did. And so on and so on. This lovely coupe. You know, big nose. Dramatic car, really dynamic. I mean, you can start saying rude things about it and rude things about people that have these cars and, and their relationship with them, and the image that they're trying to project. I don't buy any of that, really. Um, but the question is, what are these cars really all about? Right, so this is the inside of my... Um, Renault Master van. Now, we bought this van in 2002. It's a really old van now, but actually it hasn't changed from the time it was new. The seats are in, you know, as new condition. The uh, dash and everything here looks as new. And uh, now that we've had a new gearbox fitted <laughs> and uh, we've kept the bodywork um, free of any little rust spots, uh, this van is uh, drives and looks almost as it did when we bought it, um, you know, 18, uh, sort of 15 years ago. So, but what's it worth? Nothing. <laughs> Not worth anything. A lot of metal and a lot of plastic. And then when you compare this to, um, and I keep saying this to some of these cars that are more modern, or are, if you like, more desirable, say an Aston Martin, that's at one, at one extreme, and I don't know, a, um, well, one I was looking at the other day, which, which was the, uh, the old Datsun 240Z. Now, that was a car I really fancied and I really wanted, but at the time, I couldn't afford one, and I settled for a Toyota Celica, which was, you know, sort of poor man's uh, Datsun 240, really. But the uh, 240Z now, that's, um, that went through a period, actually, of uh, uh, not being uh, that valuable, not being that... Uh, interesting to people uh, because it was uh, fed into this, came into this um, area of being uh, an old Japanese car and Japanese cars haven't really um, become popular as classical old cars now uh, but they're starting you know there are, I mean the, the 240Z is, is, is one of the ones in that category uh, some of the big limos uh, maybe in the Lexus models will be big one day um, there's lots of, uh, obviously, the um, the uh, sp sports saloons. They're very popular, obviously. Um, the Evo ones. But, uh, really, I just can't get my head around this whole business with cars and why some are um, more popular than others and certainly fetch more money. Now, at one end of the... Uh, ex uh, one extreme of old cars are where cars are simply a place to put money you know if you I, I read that the most expensive car ever sold was sold a few weeks ago maybe it was a few months ago I'm not sure now because I read so much stuff and some of it's old but it sold for around 44 million but you know somebody putting even a half a million or a million into a car and they're not buying that as a car to drive and in the end I guess whether or not the car is able to be driven on the road is probably not that important because the fact that it is an object where money's gone into it and it's a place to park your money so it's been accepted that uh, sort of some old Aston Martins and some Bentleys and some old Rolls Royces and so on and so on have become cars that are accepted as being well accepted as being valuable a place where you know if you put half a million pounds into it um that half million pounds will stay as a half million pounds and hopefully will will increase and probably will increase but when you look at old cars you realize that it is just an old car at the end of the day and in fact some of these expensive cars um they use components that are in cheap cars some of the uh, lighting systems, the switches, the gears, um, some of the mechanical components, you know, um, differentials, I don't know, uh, wheel bearings, I guess, maybe, I don't know, lots and lots of components. They're, they're, the, these smaller companies um, 
Well, Aston Martin's a good one. I mean, they used parts from lots of other manufacturers. And then, of course, when they were taken over by Ford, uh, they used lots of Ford parts because, you know, Aston Martin uh, handcrafted a good part of the car and they assembled the final product. But they didn't manufacture and design every aspect of that car. So what I'm really saying is... Um, but at the end of the day, all cars are the same. They're just a product made of metal and plastic and glass. And some of them are better built than others, agreed. Some are better designed technically uh, and also better designed aesthetically. But at the end of the day, a lot of it is just what we perceive because some of these so-called supercars for example you know you read about them and, and uh, you see that uh, unless you service them every you know a few hundred miles and uh, you know you can't get parts of them they leak uh, they, there's all sorts of things that go wrong with them they're expensive to maintain so why would that be a decent car I mean as, as a mechanical car you can't drive it more than a few thousand miles without having, without having to have a specialist look at it so what is it you know why is that such a fantastic car and actually they're um, performance um, uh, details, you know, then they're, they're not uh, they're not as good as some of the cars you just buy off the shelf, as it were. You know, you go into a, uh, a main dealer and buy, a, you know, an Audi or, or or a Ford or anything, and they go faster than a lot of these supercars. Um, Man, you have to pay uh, money, but uh, but you certainly don't pay as much as you do for some of these absolutely fantastic cars. So I'm not sold by any of that. You know, I think it's just uh, what we perceive. I've never, never thought a Ferrari was a great car. What is it? I don't even think their designs are that brilliant. And uh, their performance on a lot of their cars are not, you know, extraordinary. I mean, lots of cars do these, these performance figures now. And the quality of the build, um, from what I read, because I've never had a Ferrari and I've never driven a Ferrari, but from what I read, uh, their, their, their quality control, uh, the quality of the products, is not that good. Um, but I, I, you know, I've had mainstream cars, even my little Crossfire or the Jag. I mean, the quality of the build is absolutely tremendous. So I don't believe, and you know, you can tell me I'm wrong, obviously, but and you probably will. But I don't believe that a lot of these cars that are rated so highly and, and um, attract so much money are because they are absolutely fabulous uh, cars in terms of quality, um, aesthetic design, and, and so forth. I think they, um, they project an image which a lot of people have bought into. And then it goes beyond that. It goes to the point that investors start putting their money into it. And uh, then, you know, once you've started spending you know, a million pounds for a car, you know the likelihood is that somebody else will fall for that and they'll pay 1.2 or whatever and it goes, so it goes on. Um, you know, you're not going to actually buy a car for a million and then sort of dump it for, you know, 50,000 pounds or whatever. So I dismiss all those cars as irrelevant. So there's one thing I learned in life, if I learned nothing else, and that is that there are no shortage of experts in the world and uh, most experts actually are experts because they they comment on hindsight and that's an easy thing to do you know we all know what happened yesterday and we um, we can all have an opinion on it the uh, the interesting thing then is to say what's going to happen in the future so we all know that uh, cars like Ferraris and Aston Martins and so forth have become expensive to buy and uh, are well beyond the uh, the, the uh, ability of people like me and most people to buy. So what's going to happen in the future? Well, I think there's a couple of interesting, I think, facts. Uh, one is that for whatever reason, and I don't buy into this one either, but for whatever reason, we're, me, we're going to be moved away from the internal combustion engine um, and towards electricity. Now, I'm not going to go on 
discussing the uh, how feasible this will be in the end and whether it will work out. But let's assume that it that it has to because it's being forced upon us. Now, that means that almost from this point onwards, you have to say, are car manufacturers going to spend billions collectively in developing internal combustion engines uh, further than where they are at the moment? Probably it's safe to say they are not. So we may have reached the end of um, the development of the internal combustion engine um, because what's the point of you know spending a large sum of money now say in developing the engine that, that will be in a car in the next six or seven years time because by then we'll be six or seven years down the road towards getting rid of internal combustion engines and moving to electric now you know even Jaguar have um, announced that they are uh, producing E-type Jags with electric engines electric motors should I say sorry and uh, whilst they take the original engine out of the car and um, it can be put back but you know they're creating a car that uh, can run on electrics now this is no different to that Fiat 500 which uh, was uh, around and being pushed as a as a project a year or so ago um, and the whole concept of having electric cars with classic bodies is probably a good thing I mean it, it, it uh, promotes electric cars and it gives a, a continuation into the future for the people like myself who would prefer to drive around in beautiful old um, designed uh, cars well this old Dodge is probably um, one of the more interesting old cars that uh, will be living on, I hope, and I believe, into the future. Not this car particularly, but cars like this. Because this technology is so simple, and the bodies are so beautiful. This car, I'm sorry to say, I think, and cars like it, I think will end up disappearing um, once it is impossible to have this car serviced and maintained and all the electronics working correctly because the, there is no availability for spares these cars will just be sent to the crusher because there is no virtue in, in, in spending a vast sum of money a vast sum more than the car was when it was new to put an electric motor in it what would be the point um, whereas cars like this are much simpler and um, you know they take less electric to run all the functions in it whereas this car of course not only would you need electric to run the motor then you need electric to run all the facilities and functions of the car and having to convert a car as complex as this to electric motor I should suspect is more difficult than it would be just to chuck a you know an electric motor in one of these old cars and it just runs the transmission and uh, you know the wheels you know you're just moving along and that's it and the rest of it runs off a simple battery system um, and these bodies are so different and so beautiful that as years go by they're just going to be uh, desirable to a lot of people I, sp I speak relatively a lot really because we're talking hundreds and thousands not uh, not the millions that drive cars so this old Diane is probably how I see most of the cars that we're driving around in today that we laughingly call classics which are basically just uh, old cars so we've got, uh, you know, cars that will probably stay around because people have invested millions in them. They're just objects of art, uh, just like a painting. You know, why, why is a painting by Van Gogh or somebody worth millions and another artist who paints, in my view, just as good, uh, not worth a penny? Um, people perceive it to be, and once the money starts being invested in it, 
um, it's being sold back and forth between other investors because they're the only people that are buying them. You know, they don't, we don't spend a million pounds on a, on a Aston Martin and then somebody like me goes and buys it for a million. No, it's bought by another person who puts his million or million and a half into it and then consequently sells it to somebody else. It's all just money being passed around among people that have the money. So forget all those cars because they're not important. What's important are the cars in the middle, really, because the cars at the end are the old bangers and they're just going to be scrapped. So it's the cars in the middle that are in good condition and um, are of interest to a lot of people. And here's a good example amongst my cars, and that's this Mercedes. Now at the moment it's quite a desirable car because of its rarity. Um, it, and being the original formatic system, the car is in um, beautiful condition, um, and uh, the engine is not that important. I mean, in a way, you, you could convert it to electric, but then uh, that, would that work? No, because it wouldn't work because you'd lose the the formatic system that's in there, and the car would just be another old um, estate car. So I don't see, see a future for a lot of these cars. My Renault, there again. Would the car ever reach a sort of value that you'd even want to be bothered to put an electric motor in it? And uh, as soon as you can't get the bits, now I had trouble getting some of the bits for this car because Renault don't want to know. Most of the stuff now I find for it, I find on the internet. But as I say, Renault don't really want to know about this car. Uh, it's just an old banger to them that they sold for a while, you know, 15 years ago, and it wasn't a success, so what do they want to know? There might be a few individual people that um, work within the dealerships that have a, you know, curiosity interest in it, um, but uh, as a company, they're not, they're not interested in it, obviously. So, you know... What will happen to the cars like this? Because eventually something's going to go on it that I can't fix. The car will be scrapped, I guess, because I run out of point of getting spares. But then, of course, we've got the um, the exceptions to the rule. We've got the uh, the uh, little Amy here, and uh, we've got my two CV and all the cars like that, more thousands, um, little minis. I don't know, lots of cars like this cars that are so simple and are so interesting so cute and so so much fun that actually like the Fiat 500 to maybe convert them to electric is going to be the way to go now at the moment it's an expensive operation but I don't believe it will be forever I think that in the end as we get to the point where the only way we're going to keep old cars going is to convert them to electric I think that there will be a whole industry starting up, and th that is my prediction. That's that's what all this was about. You know, I, I can see a future being less old cars on the road. I think dramatically so, um, and the cars that are of a real interest to people. And I'm not talking about the cars that are, you know, going to stay as they are, like the Ferraris and the Aston Martins. That money's been invested. I'm talking about cars like this, Amy. Maybe even the Crossfire, I don't know, a car that... I think there'll be um, an industry developed which will convert these cars to electric so that you can still drive around, show them, be seen in them, enjoy them. Um, but they'll be able to be on the road because they've got electric motors. Now, I guess that sounds stupid, but then... You know, when you go back to all these experts with hindsight, the reason that they're experts with hindsight is because they, they're commenting on things that people did or didn't do right. And it, people didn't do things right or make the right decisions because it seemed improbable sometimes that things were going to pan out the way that they had. And I think if I was investing in a business I had the money, I'd probably, in cars, I'd probably, I'd probably delve into this question of converting classics or old cars into electric. Anyway.
Meanwhile, I'm going to try and keep mine going as much uh, as long as I can. Um, I'm not going to sell them particularly because I want to get out of them while I, while there's still a market for them. But I think that's another thing that they reach a point where they, I mean, some of these cars now are just worthless. I mean, these cars, relatively speaking, for what you spend on them and everything, they have no value. I've said it many times, but the Crossfire amazes me how cheap that you can buy that. But I think the time will come they'll be worth even less. Because who wants an old car when you know that you can't get it, keep it going once components go, and also somewhere down the line um, you won't even be able to drive it. That day will come, I'm sure of it. Right, well, the uh, 2CV, I've been out in it today, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It seems to be running better than ever. It sounds really nice. You know, the motor's really, really good, and uh, it's just going well. I mean, you know, I'm not thrashing it, obviously, but not that I actually ever thrash my cars, really, at all. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, but this one is just going beautiful. It really is. So pleased with it. You know, I just noticed something as I was talking there. That bumper isn't straight, is it? That bumper is closer there than it is there. Or is it my imagination? No. No. I've never knocked that car. It's funny, that. Oh, well. Right, well, I'm sitting here in my uh, 2CV at the moment in uh, part of my wood here. Um, and uh, I just wanted to explain something. The previous part of this video may have sounded a little bit disjointed and rambling, and the reason was because um, my dog, my German Shepherd, uh, who... Um, has been with me constantly for uh, eight years w was diagnosed a few months ago with cancer and uh, has been gradually going downhill um, and during the previous part of this video he was uh, extremely ill and my mind was preoccupied really and uh, a few days ago unfortunately and sadly he died and so I haven't continued with the video for a few days and uh, now I feel I've got to push myself and get back to uh, trying to explain what I was getting at with uh, classic cars um, but I think all of you who you know have had dogs and uh, will understand uh, how I feel and it affects you uh, to the point that you don't really even think straight sometimes. So, I'm going to try my best to uh, maybe recover some of the ground and make a point which I'm quite serious about, and it is the question of uh, classics, old cars, whatever you want to call them. I tend to uh, want to really call them old cars, because that's what they are, and, uh, you know, where we are with them and the future, because, you know, I've spent most of my life... Um, involved uh, with owning older cars and, and this is in, as well as new cars so you know it's not like I just had old cars uh, you know I had I was buying current cars as well and running the latest cars as they came out latest technology but I always had older vehicles um, there were you know this passionate reason that I, that I just wanted to own them Lots of, well, there were lots of reasons why I think we, we, we want older cars. Um, anyway, so I'm going to carry on with this, and uh, because there is a, a very uh, important, in my mind important, point that I'm going to try and make 